What's up guys? Clark Shaw here, Six Pack Shortcuts. And today, I wanna give you guys a quick workout on how to build a wide back. I know you guys wanna see more ab videos, chest and biceps, but don't forget about working the back, okay? It's very important if you want that V taper, if you want that slim waist look, to work your back out. And a lot of people always focus on the show muscles, that's what we call them, the biceps, the chest, and they leave the back out. So, very important, proportion, okay? That's how a lot of uh, some of these competitors actually can beat other guys that may be a lot bigger than them is because they're more proportionate. That's how Arnold did it, basically. That's how he beat guys that were a lot bigger than him because he was proportionate. So you do want to build a wide back to give your waist that tapered look. And I'm gonna show you guys four of my favorite and best uh, exercises for building a V taper or a wide back. So first thing is going to be pull-ups. And you wanna take a, a medium to wide grip there. If you take it too narrow and you start pulling, you're pulling with your biceps. So let me show you an example. This is pulling with my biceps. If you focus right here and look at my lats, my lats don't really work much when I'm doing pull-ups like that. But now if I take a slightly wider grip and I focus on flaring my lats out right there, and I focus on pulling with my lats, that's how you're gonna build your back. So again, if you're doing this, that's more of a bicep workout right there. So just try to focus on flaring your lats out. And don't worry if you guys can't do a pull-up yet. Uh, what you can do is you can spot yourself, meaning you can take a little bit of your uh, body weight off. So what I'll do is I'll grab a bench, something to put my foot on so that I can take some of the body weight off here. So if you can't pull your own weight, place one foot on the bench, same form, and just give yourself a little, a little push there and do the negative. So if you can't pull, give yourself a little push there and do the negative. So you just wanna focus on trying to flare the lats out, get the reps in even if you reach failure, you put all your body weight there. So basically, if you need to, you can even push yourself up and just work on the negative right there. So you guys wanna do four sets here to complete failure. Actually, scratch that. You wanna do four sets three reps beyond failure, meaning when you can no longer do another rep, you're gonna do forced reps. So let's say, I'll give you an example. So, and the key is here not to try to just go through the motion, you wanna work the muscle. So you're not just trying to swing your body up there. I mean, if you're trying to get as many as you can, you know, you're gonna end up doing something like that, but that's not the goal. The goal here is to make your lats work nice and slow. So let's say I get to failure and I can't pull myself up anymore. I'm gonna go one, two, three. So three reps beyond failure. That's what's going to stimulate that muscle growth right there. Okay, second exercise, lat pull downs. It's basically gonna be a similar form I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times, but uh, I'm just gonna show you again. When you do these, some people pull behind the neck. I found it just to be, uh, I found it to be just as effective to do, just go right to your chin right there. And same thing, you wanna flare your lats out. So if you pay attention to my back, I keep my lats flared out versus, again, you don't want to work your biceps here. So this right here is working your biceps more than your back. So take a medium wide grip, keep the lats flared out. And try to keep your form pretty strict. Uh, if you find yourself doing this, it's probably too heavy. Uh, once you reach failure, you wanna get those force reps, it's okay to kind of cheat a little bit and swing a little bit, but only on the reps where you start to reach that failure point. Uh, if you have to do that from the beginning of the set, then it's too heavy. If it's towards the end, that's fine, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to just push the muscles above and beyond. 
and that's what's going to create that growth. So the third exercise we're going to do is bent over barbell rows. Now before I get started on doing this exercise, I can't stress enough the form. If you guys ever notice when you're in the gym you see mirrors everywhere, they're there for a reason. They're there so you can see yourself. So use the mirrors, that way you can watch your form. If you're bending over with your back hunched over like this, that's not the right form and that's going to be very dangerous on your lower back. So you want to keep your shoulders back, shoulder blades pinched, back straight, and you're basically just slightly bending in the hips right here. So if you notice my back is flat rather than hunched over like that. So if you can't see, turn your profile, watch your form in the mirror. So I'm looking at my back and I'm trying to focus on keeping that, that arch right there. So if you start hunching over, you gotta correct it. So make sure that you can even get into this position first before you start picking up weights. If you can't do this, then you gotta practice or do something else. Otherwise, rows like this is gonna destroy your back. If not now, eventually. So I'm just gonna start off with uh, 45 here. Okay, your grip, you can alternate between going overhand or underhand. Typically, if I go underhand, I take a kind of a more narrow grip, that way I can really feel my lats squeezing. So back straight here, right there. And the depth that you're gonna lower it is just past the knee. So if you see yourself rowing like this, that's almost like an upright row. So. This exercise is called bent over rows. It means you're bent over, not standing upright. It's not an upright row. Then you can take a overhand grip, take a little bit slightly wider, keeping your back flat. And each rep, you basically want the bar to kind of hit your abdomen. So to your abs, just past the knee. To your abs, and just past the knee. Right there. So that would be the correct form. Uh, don't forget, Keep an eye on that back. That's the most important thing on this exercise to remember. You wanna go failure typically about eight to 12 reps. So if you feel like you can do more than 12 easily, it's probably too light. Uh, if you can't even do eight, it's probably too heavy. So adjust accordingly. And uh, once you hit that failure point, what I like to do on a lot of my exercises is called drop sets. So let's just say if I had a little bit more weight on here, if you want to get that extra intensity, once you get the form right, then you can do these. Let's say I, I do as many reps as I can. I reach a point where I basically fail. Can't get another one. I'm just going to drop the weight down, and then you're going to keep going. So that's a drop set. That adds intensity. It's going to help to build your muscles a lot faster. And last but not least, we're going to go over here and do... Some bent over dumbbell rows. She's just a flat bench. There we go. Pick a weight that you're comfortable with. Again, eight to 12 reps. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter just to show you guys the form. So, watch your back, the arch. You wanna keep it flat right here. Okay, if you're doing rows on the right side, you wanna be at the right edge of the bench because if you're in the center, it's gonna keep hitting the bench. So come over to the edge, keep the back flat, okay? And you're not rowing up here. You're basically trying to squeeze the lats so you're actually pulling here. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you're pulling kind of towards your hips. And you don't have to be perfectly straight right here. You can use a little bit of rotation that way you involve your core as well too and it adds a little bit more range of motion. So you don't have to be perfectly still right here. You can kind of rotate and down, and rotate and down. And I'm pulling towards my hip right there. Uh, one trick that I do sometimes, rather than doing just the traditional bent over barbell rows, uh, I mean dumbbell rows, is that typically when you start going heavy, most of the resistance is from here to about 50%. The rest of the way, is merely 
your momentum, pulling the weight up. So I like to work the muscle through a range of motion where it typically doesn't get a lot of stimulation. So what I'll do is I'll come up, I'll stop halfway, bring it up, three. So I'll go one, two, three. So it's basically one, two, three, down. One, two, three, down. Because typically when you're doing rows, all the resistance is from here to here. The rest is just momentum coming up. So the muscle is hardly worked at the top of the motion. So that's a little secret that I do every now and then to add more intensity. And we all know intensity equals results. No intensity, little results. High intensity, good results. And uh, those are the four exercises that I wanted to show you guys to build that wide back, the V taper. Uh, and uh, confession, when I first started working out, all I did was biceps and chest. That's all I did, I had no back. Like I had this huge chest, and when I turned to the side, the back was non-existent. So it wasn't until that point where I decided, man, you don't wanna be disproportionate, you wanna be proportionate. You wanna have that good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, you wanna be proportionate. I just took you guys through the four exercises that I like to do to build a nice V-tapered back to get that width on the lats. Uh, if you're wondering how many sets to do, do about uh, three sets per exercise and that should be sufficient. Now, if you feel like you wanna go above and beyond, do four sets per exercise, but let's just say you wanna go intense and you're not sure if you can finish four sets for each exercise, you can go through the workout and do three sets per exercise and in the end, if you feel like, okay, well, you know, I got some more in me, then you can basically go back and do one more set of each. So what I'll usually do is I'll knock out my four sets of the, uh, three sets of the pull-ups, then I go over there, I'll do three sets of the lat pull-downs, then I'll go over there and I'll do three sets of the bent over barbell row, then I'll do three sets of the bent over dumbbell row. Now, if I'm going beyond failure on every single set that I do, three sets is sufficient if you're really going intense. But let's just say you kind of ran through it and you feel like, man, I could have done better. Then you go back and you do one more set of each exercise. And on that round, you go really, really hardcore. And that's how you build your back. And a lot of guys just think bigger is better. It's not, okay? You wanna be proportionate. So it's not just building bigger biceps or bigger chest. It's having the right proportion. So if you have the right proportion, your physique is going to be that much more impressive. You don't necessarily have to be the biggest dude in the gym, uh, have the biggest arms or the biggest chest. You just wanna be proportionate. And that's what's more important as far as accentuating your physique. Again, guys, my name is Clark Shaw, Six Pack Shortcuts. Look out for more videos. See you guys next time.